great beginning to the new year. February, the coldest month in the northern hemisphere, is now upon us. But that is no reason not to go out and enjoy what few clear nights there are. So join me, Lead Night Sky Ranger, Jeff, also known as Star Dad, as we peek around our solar system and universe. Mercury, Venus, and Mars are all late morning objects. Mercury is only three degrees above the horizon on the first and heads to conjunction with the sun by the end of the month. You'll need an excellent eastern view around sunrise to see it. Venus rises above the horizon around 0530 throughout the month in the east southeast. You will have about 90 minutes before the sun overpowers Venus with daylight at our location. Venus will be 11 arc seconds in size and will reveal its total cloud coverage. Observing the moon this month will start on the 19th. Full moon is on the 24th. It's elliptical crater month. Look to the southwest just to the sunny side of the Terminator and find the large oval shaped crater Schiller. Just north of it is a smaller oval shaped crater Hainzel. And the shape of Schiller is the result of a low angular meteor strike. Unlike a direct impact, there is no central rebound. After the collision, lava apparently welled up smoothing out the floor inside the crater. Hainzel, on the other hand, is the result of several impacts that were more direct and there is a significant time of impact differential. That is, the northeast impact was earlier, the southeast later, and the southern impact the last. We can tell this because of the softening of the crater walls. Mars joins Mercury and Venus in the morning sky. On the first it will slip over the horizon at 0610. By the end of the month it will rise at 0530. It will be about four arc seconds in size, thus it won't reveal any detail without a lot of magnification. And then because it is so low, the atmospheric turbulence will wreak havoc at trying to discern any surface features. Our asteroid of the month is Vesta again. At 300 miles wide, it should be discernible in small telescopes or binoculars at a magnitude of 7.5. However, because Earth is overtaking Vesta, it will appear almost stationary and in retrograde motion relative to us. You need observation sketches several days apart to confirm having located it. Jupiter is the star of the show this month, riding high in the south-southwest sky at twilight. At magnitude minus 2.2, it will be easy to recognize it. It sets at 0030 on the 1st and around 0230 on the 28th. So it's a great evening object. Our orbit has taken us to the far side of the Sun in relation to Jupiter. So the planet's apparent size shrinks by 3 arc seconds from 39 to 36 arc seconds. Try to see the largest weather storm in our solar system, the Great Red Spot, which has faded to a pinkish color. As Jupiter rotates in about 10 hours, the spot should be viewable every other night. There are several transits of the Galilean moons, which I will list in the events calendar later on. Saturn gets lower in the sky each day, starting out 45 minutes after sunset at 12 degrees above the horizon. This will give you only about 45 minutes of observing as the sky slowly darkens. By mid-month, Saturn will all but disappear as it goes into superior conjunction with the Sun on the 28th. Uranus follows Jupiter by about 45 minutes, riding high in the evening sky. It will be slightly to the east of the Moon on the 15th. Find its turquoise dot at magnitude 5.8 at 20 astronomical units away. Recall an astronomical unit is the average Earth-Sun distance of about 93 million miles. Neptune follows Saturn by about one hour in Pisces the fish, so viewing time will be limited. Look for its blue dot low on the horizon as darkness sets in. We have a couple of comets to observe this month, starting with 8th magnitude comet 12P Pons Brooks. It is located at 0530 on the 15th at about 14 degrees above the horizon in Lacerda the Lizard. 
It is expected to brighten to magnitude 6 next month. Comet 62P Shushinchan is the real star this month, shining at 8th magnitude in Virgo, the Virgin, rising above the horizon around 2130, reaching peak of 60 degrees high to the southwest at 0130. Let me add a note that my version of Stellarium has incorrect coordinates for this comet. Always consult the Minor Planet Center's Ephemeris for accurate coordinates. Finally, Comet C2021 S3 Panstars rises at 0300 to the southeast in Ophicius, rising to 25 degrees above the horizon at 0545 on the 15th. There are no meteor showers this month. Occasionally, a meteor may hit the atmosphere. There are about six per hour, but they are hard to spot. Monoceros is our constellation of the month. Monoceros is Greek for unicorn, a winter constellation just to the east of Orion the Hunter. Our object is a beautiful nebula, object NGC 2244, the Rosette Nebula. This nebula is located 5,200 light years away with a radius of 65 light years. At magnitude 9.0, you will need a small telescope to view it although you probably won't be able to discern its reddish tinge. It is a hydrogen-2 field of gas which glows in the red area of the spectrum. Our question of the month is why don't Mars rovers have a dust wiping system to allow their solar panels to fully charge their batteries? Well, the latest rovers, i.e. Perseverance, actually don't use solar panels. They use a nuclear fuel that breaks down over time, releasing energy. This avoids using cumbersome panels on an object that moves. As far as landers are concerned, for instance the InSight lander, it is a trade-off. Given a limited budget, the team has to decide what is more important, a dust wiping system that takes money, space, and energy, or some other experiment of a mission that can't be performed. In the InSight case, the critical mission was of shorter duration than the amount of expected accumulated dust. Here is the orrery for February 2024. Here is the calendar of events. So bundle up and go out and enjoy at least a few minutes outdoors observing this huge and fascinating universe we live in. Who knows, maybe you'll see something new and unique.